Hello everyone. In today's session, we will talk at length about Vijay Tendulkar's play Silence, The Court is in Session. It is considered one of the finest dramatic works of the present times. It is a totally theatrical play set in an environment of intrigue, hypocrisy, greed and brutality, all features of the present day society. The play is divided into three acts. Here we find a group of artists, namely Leela Benare, Mr. and Mrs. Kashikar, Sukhatme, Pongshe and Balu Rokde, who were planning to stage a play in a village. It so turned out that one of the members of the cast, Professor Damle, did not show up. So, a local stagehand, Samant, was asked to replace him. The actual play was scheduled to be staged at the night. Therefore, to pass the time of the drowsy afternoon, a rehearsal was arranged and a mock trial was staged to make him understand the court procedure. Over the course of the first act, the tone gradually changes from jovial to menacing when the male members of the group conspire and put Miss Benare, one of the members of the cast, in the dock where a mock charge of infanticide was levelled against her. Further, she was accused of being a licentious woman who seduces every male member of the group into marriage. She was even suspected of having an illicit relationship with Professor Damle and bears an illegitimate child from the relationship. The interval break happens when Mrs. Benare tries to escape from the room but finds the door jammed. The claustrophobia she feels is palpable. Then the pretend play suddenly turns into an accusatory game and from the witnesses it emerged that she did bear an illegitimate child by Professor Damle, the missing member of the cast. Post interval, the chirpy Miss Benare turns quiet. She sits stone like while the others pass judgments. Thus, it is a powerful satire on the shallow conventions and the shameful hypocrisy of the middle class male dominated society. Vijay Dondopan Tendulkar was born on 7th January 1928 in Kolhapur, Maharashtra. He was a leading playwright, movie and television writer, literary essayist, political journalist and social commentator primarily in Marathi. His prolific writing career spanning five decades includes 30 full-length plays, seven one-act plays, six collections of children's plays, four short stories, two novels and 17 film scripts. He is considered a giant among the modern Indian playwrights, both in terms of the volume and quality of his dramatic creations. He comes across as a subtle observer of Indian social reality, a humanist and an innovative playwright who continuously experimented with form and structures. He was known for his insightful objectification in the development of multi-layered characters whose existential angst was held up against the social crisis of the society. As a renowned writer of realistic dramas, Tendulkar often electrifies the conservative audience with brutal themes and forthright dialogues. In fact, his plays have dealt with themes that unravel the exploitation of power and latent violence in human relationships. He can also be considered a problem playwright as the recurring themes in his plays points out the social, individual and ethical problems. The soul of his dramas is the conflict between reality and illusion or life and art. 
In short, they are the conflicts between the individual and the society where circumstances and environment play great roles. Without being sentimental and emotional, his characters depict stark realism. Women play central roles in his plays, bringing in a broad range of emotions, from the unbelievably gullible to the clever, from the malleable to the stubborn, from the conservative to the rebellious, from the self-sacrificing to the grasping. His characters are often composites of contradictory personalities struggling between emotion and intellect, espoused values and conflicting actions, seeking independence yet submissive, struggling between physical desires and conscience. Unlike Brecht, Tendulkar never judges his protagonist. Instead, he concentrates on painting them with unsettling compassion. His plays which revolve around some contemporary idea, event or issue continue to pose more questions than easy or comfortable answers, which are endowed with an unusual subtlety that rates the plays above hackneyed social melodrama. The inner core of these works is rooted in his deep compassion and respect for human life, for life in the social reality of post-colonial India. Tendulkar, who is a master of understated dialogue and fine irony, weaned Marathi theatre away from its habitual sentimentalism, overwriting and narrow drawing room themes. Further, he has been celebrated as the playwright of the millennium, whose plays have been perceived by critics as being ahead of their times, are also timeless because of his accurate and sensitive portrayal of the social issues of the time. Silence, the court is in session, which became a milestone in the history of whole Marathi drama, revealed through the device of a play within a play, the latent human cruelty against the vulnerable. Tendulkar received much recognition and has been felicitated with many honours and awards, including the Padma Bhushan, Sangeet Natak Academy, Maharashtra Gaurav Puraskar, and ranked with great playwrights like Badal Sarkar and Girish Karnad. Written in 1963, Silence, the court is in session, was originally named Shantata, Court Chalu Ahe, in Marathi, and was translated in English by Priya Adarkar. It is considered one of the finest plays of Tendulkar, as he strives for effectiveness of assertion in a variety of ways in the present play. Silence, the court is in session, which fetched immense fame and recognition, is a perfect creation involving multifaceted dramaturgic skills. Stage within a stage, importance of absentee character, the problem of identity and feminine assertion, and above all, the poetic language are all accurately and effectively interwoven in the play. It is a search for reality and feminine identity. Broadly, the play focuses on the role of women in patriarchal society. In the play, Tendulkar has depicted the predicament of a young woman who is a victim of the male dominance in society. He criticizes the follies prevailing in the society. Further, the play carries all the vitalities of contemporary life. It focuses on the human mind and detects the ugliness in it. By using the technique of a play within a play, the playwright portrays the conflict between Benare and the middle class patriarchal society effectively. In fact, 
Tendulkar has criticized the middle class morality that throttles the tender desires of Ms. Benare, a middle class woman to mother a child out of wedlock in the play. Benare, who is known for her uncompromising spirit of independence and natural gusto for life, has been inhumanly treated as an accused in the chauvinistic court of law. She has to undergo agonizing torture and psychological trauma for challenging the scornful and cynical norms and modes of behavior. She has become a desperate victim of society because she tries to live independently and enjoy life. As an emancipated woman of modern India, she has been in search of true meaning of life. Because of her motherly instinct and her care and anxiety for the well-being of her child in the womb, she goes to the extent of begging the undeserving men to marry her and father her child. While Miss Benare is held responsible for unwedded motherhood, which is considered to be a serious act of social trespass, Professor Damle, who undermines Benare's honor and self-respect by making her pregnant, is allowed to go scot-free. Though it is not a propaganda play, it grapples with several problems of the Indian society, such as the degradation of the judicial system, pretentious institutional social service organizations and forceful male supremacy in Indian society in an excellent way. The play is a derision on the middle class probity where people have all the rights to pass judgments by being the moral brigade and silence is the only alternative left for the victim. In fact, the women have no room of their own and they live under constant pressure of patriarchal restrictions. The identity of a woman, her urge for social importance, economic sufficiency and moral acceptance constitute the pivotal issue in the present text. In fact, it is a realistic play in the sense that the middle class characters figuring in them are obsessed with mundane issues who find life rather dull and unhappy. It can also be considered a discussion play as the social issues discussed in it are not organically integrated into the plots but expounded in the dramatic give and take of a sustained debate among the characters. In the play, the setting is the city and the atmosphere is tense throughout with occasional patches of comic relief. The style that Tendulkar uses in this play is demotic, modeled on the language rhythms and associations of ordinary speech. The play is designed on the model of the popular dramatic construct of the present century. It has three acts but there are no scene divisions in the acts. The plot is expertly structured so that the denouement unravels itself as a reversal. The members of an amateur theatre group called the Sonar Moti Tenement in Bombay Progressive Association arrive in a village near Bombay to perform an awareness raising play on the trial of American President Lyndon B. Johnson on the charge of producing atomic weapons. The protagonist, Ms. Leela Benare, a school teacher, is a member of this theatre group whereas the other members are the Kashikar couple, Balu Rokde, Sukhatme, Pongshe, Karnik, Professor Damle and Raute. Leela Benare and Samant, a local villager, are the first to arrive at the village hall where the actors are to stage a mock law court. Meanwhile, 
she talks to Samant about her teaching career. Thereafter, she makes sarcastic remarks about other members to Samant. Soon, all other members also arrive at the village hall. The actual play was scheduled to be staged at night to pass the drowsy afternoon and also to show Samant the procedural intricacies of the court since he was to replace the fourth witness, the members of the theatre group decide to act a new mock trial different from the one which is to be staged at night. The co-actors of Benare deliberately choose her as the accused in the imaginary trial. In the mock trial, Benare is accused of a grave socio-moral charge, that of infanticide. Her trial would be held under Section 302 of the Indian Penal Code. She is also accused of trying to seduce every male member of the group into marriage. Further, she is suspected of having an illicit relationship with Professor Damle and bears a child from this relationship. Society cannot tolerate this unmarried expectant mother who is treated as a sinful canker on the body of society. All the members condemn her as an evil influence that would destroy the social structure. But not even once is Professor Damle blamed for being responsible for Benare's wretched condition. Tendulkar here focuses on the hypocritical double standards of the so-called civilized urban middle class society. The improvised mock trial begins enthusiastically, but before long it takes a sinister turn. The witnesses become brazenly personal in their direct references to the accused Benare. They forget the privacy of her life and continually attack below the belt. The members of patriarchy, by force, try to prove her moral laxity. Kashikar, the judge, flouting the norms of the court, enters the witness box to give evidence against Benari. Following the tradition of the court, they call the witnesses for defense who remain absent. Sukhatme so, plays the role of both the counsel for the prosecution and the counsel for the accused. The whole trial becomes farcical. All the members gang up against Benare to stifle her voice of protest. Mr. Kashikar, as the judge, praises mother and the motherland with bombastic phrases in Sanskrit, but stigmatizes Benare for bearing a love child. What is more disturbing is that Mrs. Kashikar, who should have been supportive of Benare, also gangs up with other male members of the group and severely criticizes her. As a witness, she heinously attacks professionally successful women. Further, the chairman sacks her from her job without holding an inquiry. Before passing the final verdict on Benare, she is given 10 seconds to defend her case. At this, the motionless Benare stands up erect and says, Yes, I have a lot to say. Then follows a long monologue in which Benare expresses her zest for life and tells how she is deprived of her wishes. In the final verdict, Benare is equated with criminals and sinners and the court orders that she should live but the child in her womb should be destroyed. Writhing in pain, Benare at first strongly resists the allegations brought against her but in a while, Stifled sobs are heard from her. The play thus reveals the moral hypocrisy, the sadistic tendencies and the hostility, the verbal violence of the male-dominated society against women. 
as a sensitive and committed writer, Tendulkar perceives the harsh realities of contemporary society and depicts them artistically without any preconceived notions. The mock trial marks a deft stroke on the part of Tendulkar's dramatic genius. It functions almost like a play within the play, as the real performance is supposed to have been mock law court. It is the mock trial which is the key to the very mystery of the plot that causes the terminal reversal in the play. Benare, who has all along been baiting her male counterparts, ends up being the game ruthlessly hunted and baited by them all. This element of reversal gives the play its unique dramatic significance. The commencement of the mock trial, which constitutes a play within a play, offers Tendulkar ample scope to dissect and lay bare the dormant ills of discontent in the psyche of the urban hypocrites. It also helps the playwright expose to his audience the cruelty that is latent, like the herd mentality of the city-bred male chauvinists of India. Though the troop members gang themselves up against a helpless Benare, for the time being, they have nothing but spite for one another as well. They start dissecting her private life. They talk about her age, the reasons for remaining single, her relations with Professor Damle, her past affair with her maternal uncle, her attempt of suicide, her free life and her attempt to get married to give a father's name to the illegitimate child and all. Benare is horror struck at the naked display of their innate cruelty towards her. The eagerness and enthusiasm with which the Kashikars, Rokde, Sukhatme, Pongshe and Karnik heap evidence after evidence against her, terrify her and eventually without any pretension, she openly admits her moral weaknesses and tragic dilemma courageously. In fact, during the court proceedings, on several occasions, her objections and protestations are drowned by the judge's cry of silence and the banging of the gravel. Though the members of the mock court have, in fact, derived a lot of vicious and sadistic pleasure by forcing her to disclose her private life, they are no doubt stupefied by her true and honest confession of the intimate secrets of her life. Finally, Kashikar, the judge, gives the verdict without giving a chance for cross-examination by the defense lawyer and this violates the basic norms of the court. Neither the so-called society conscious man, Mr. Kashikar, nor the other members of the troop find fault with Professor Damle, who, in spite how of having a wife and five children, has willfully acted against the sacred institution of marriage by indulging in an extramarital affair. A judicial court is expected to uphold dignity and decorum and render justice with disinterestedness. It has to redress the grievances of the affected people based on proper investigation and examination. But unfortunately, Benare is held guilty in the trial on the basis of fabricated evidences given by the witnesses. The judge does not take efforts to probe the authenticity of the evidences. Obviously, the hardcore male chauvinistic prejudice 
has turned the judicial system into a mechanism to suppress the voice of women in society and justice is imparted in a dehumanized manner. Though Ms. Penare has been tried in the mock court for the mock charge of infanticide, she is finally compelled by the court to commit the real crime of infanticide. Quite ironically, the charge which has been framed against Benare at the beginning of the trial has turned out to be the real verdict at the end of the play. Then she reacts by screaming and finally sits frozen like a motionless statue. Thus, this mock trial helps the playwright to satirize effectively the false conventions of the male dominated society and also the latent human cruelty against the vulnerable. In Tendulkar's plays, generally, it is around women that most of the action revolves. The roles Tendulkar's female protagonists play eclipse those played by the men figuring in them. They bring not just a variety of social spheres, but also a broad range of emotions, ranging from the unbelievably gullible to the clever, from the malleable to the stubborn, from the conservative to the rebellious, and from the self-sacrificing to the grasping. It is Leela Benare in Silence, the court is in session, who plays the leading role in the play, presenting a world apparently dominated by male chauvinists. And the dramatic action gains intensity, mainly because of Benare, who is educated and efficient and refuses to be cowed down by men. The playwright, though not a self-acknowledged feminist, treats his women characters with understanding and compassion, while at the same time pitting them against men who are selfish, hypocritical and brutally ambitious. So, this play can justifiably be defined as gynocentric. Leela Benare in the play is a school teacher who is as sprightly, rebellious and assertive as the heroines of Shakespeare's romantic comedies. She is conscientious in her work and commands the love and respect of all her pupils. She is also an enlightened activist who delivers a monologue at the end of the play, which is directed against men in general and Professor Damle in particular. Here, she becomes almost the playwright's mouthpiece. Though all of her monologues are dramatic, some of her statements are highly satirical. Thus, this play became a milestone in the history of whole Marathi drama and Tendulkar acquired the epithet of an angry young man of the Marathi theatre. In the post-independence Indian theatre, Vijay Tendulkar has brought a sea change as he shocked the sensibility of the conservative audience by projecting the stark realities of life, relationships and existence. Seeking to present the modern society with its real worth, predicament, challenges, difficulties and complexities in true colours, Tendulkar has crossed into newer realms. His characters are drawn on the canvas of originality without any attempt at moralizing. He has discussed and touched upon every aspect of life, not only the happy, gleeful, but also on human weaknesses, follies and foibles. 
his plays are neither moral nor immoral in tone, but may rather be seen as amoral. The play reflects the double standards of middle class male dominated society, which is concerned only with a farcical moral code. It is Benares fear of such a code that makes her crave for marriage and forces her to beg the inferior men around one after another to marry her in order to play the role of a father to her child. Thus, the playwright realistically portrays life in a naturalistic vein. In a limited sense, Tendulkar may be seen as a silent social activist who covertly wishes to bring about a change in people's modes of thinking, feeling and behaving. As an optimist, he is willing to make people conscious towards life with all their vices and limitations. He does not propagate any particular philosophy of life as his plays are open to diverse interpretations and cannot be tied down to a single thought. In this session, we looked into the play Silence, the Courtesan Session by Vijay Tendulkar. In the next session, we will look at length into the various characters depicted in the play by the playwright. Hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you.